Hello everyone, it is December 11th, 1941 of Yamamoto's Folly. So far it's been a contentious war with a few setbacks, mostly uh, with the loss of our CVE in the Marshall Islands. And it looks like we have another setback here as uh, one of our APs takes a torpedo by a a, looks like an American submarine, one of the S-boats, which is an older model that doesn't use the Mark 14. Those older models have those more reliable torpedoes, and one of them finds one of my ships. So we have some naval combat here. The ships uh, find a little, a couple small uh, cargo ships here, and uh, quickly sink one of them. It's the only uh, encounter it looks like we have tonight. Uh, a little ASW and some marine action here. Looks like I might uh, do some damage to the submarine. That's great. Out of ASW ammo. They were doing so good, too. But uh, uh, five hits on that sub, so that'll probably send it back to uh, Soryaba. Some sinking sounds that may be from our AP. And we put a torpedo into a destroyer uh, here off the coast of the um, United States. That's great. Uh, again, uh, destroyers taking a torpedo it usually means the death of the destroyer, especially out here in open ocean, where it's going to take him a couple turns to get back to a port. Um, hopefully it'll go down. We'll see. We do hear that uh, ship sinking notification. A little bombardment at Guam as I do uh, my amphibious landing there. 230 casualties. A little bit high. We're going to have to wait a little bit a little while before attacking there, and some more casualties with the amphibious assault. I'd hoped that I uh, my bombardment would happen first, but it didn't. That's fine. And some uh, landings at Jolo and uh, uh, Legaspi as well um, over in the Philippines. Just trying to take some bases, uh, get ahead of things as much as I can. As the Japanese player, you're kind of on a clock when it comes to landings. Guam has pretty stiff defense guns, and my ships take um, quite a bit of damage. I lose some more uh, troops. Hopefully we'll see uh, some bombardment either during the day or during the, uh, the evening phase here. Uh, S-36 uh, S also gets it among my ships. Luckily, uh, nothing hits. And uh, there's an ASW attack. Okay, so this is uh, the carrier task forces here, um, sailing back to Pearl Harbor. Uh, it shows that at least one of my subs was vectored to the right location here uh, to get in among uh, those task forces headed back to Pearl. And another one. You can see this line. I've tried to make the of subs for them to uh, have to run this gauntlet on the way back. Um, but unfortunately, their ASW is too good. I'm not. not yes! Oh, ho, 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 ho. that is a beautiful, beautiful sight. Um, SI 16 puts a torpedo into the CV Constitution. Um, only one hits. It's not going to sink. It's going to be able to get back to Pearl pretty easily. But, but, uh, that's a great thing. That'll. Uh, lay it up for a while. I might... I don't see any fires. I don't see any secondary explosions, um, which is a... which is a shame. Um, I would have liked to um, yeah, see some of that extra damage and know that it would be slowed down and then I could really get the submarines uh, around it. On to the air phase here. Start off with some sweeps of uh, Rangoon. I lose a zero, he loses two planes. 
just going to rush through these sweeps. They're not exciting for you guys to watch unless there's some uh, planes for them to uh, fight. And we're sweeping Hong Kong again. Just really want to uh, take out these hurricanes and buffaloes so we can continue to sink all these uh, ships that anchor there at uh, Hong Kong. And I lose an Oscar, he loses a hurricane. And this time a hurricane just immediately uh, goes down. Another sweep over uh, Rangoon and take another H81A3 out. Again, a quaint challenge, we're just keeping this runway closed, destroying more of these planes on the ground. Uh, this Maple Squadron is actually doing a really nice job of uh, destroying and damaging a lot of planes. Good for them. A couple other light bombers don't have nearly the success that the Maples do. It looks like they do have cap over Clark Field, and one of our Zero Squadrons is sweeping it. it looks like they're taking some losses, unfortunately. We can only hope that we destroy more planes than we lose. Yeah, we lose one, they lose three. Second sweep. Take out another Warhawk. Uh, unfortunately, it's very hard to run the Allied Flare, especially in Focus Pacific, out of Warhawks. They have a very high replacement rate. They start out with good pools as well. Alright, so I, I lose some planes to Flak, but we do 25 runway hits here. Uh, you would think with 25 runway hits we'd get some planes on the ground, but unfortunately that's not the case. Uh, Mabel is going after the port. Looks like we're doing some damage to uh, the ships. That's great news. That's what we want to do. We want to uh, sink these at harbor before they have a chance to leave. I do have five Mabels destroyed by Flak. They came in, um, I think, pretty low. Yeah, 2,000 feet. Really, really low. But, you know... It's worth the trade. Those uh, five destroyed Mabels put in a lot of bomb hits on these ships, and uh, one of them uh, goes down. I like to uh, sink this uh, French destroyer. Also, the Gold Streak is a very high value uh, liner. I shouldn't say very high value, but it's a good, fast, high capacity liner that would be great to sink before you can try to like uh, run it through the gauntlet that is the South China Sea. And away. Having played the Allies quite a bit, um, I know that uh, it is possible to uh, get shipping out of Qingchao and out of Hong Kong. It's uh, a very dangerous route, but you can run them at full speed through the South China Sea and usually dodge the torpedoes as you go and make it to uh, safety of uh, the Dutch East Indies, or relative safety of the Dutch East Indies. Mabels are following up, again destroyed by Flak due to their low level, but we put another bomb in the Gold Streak. Some more sinking sounds, so another ship might have gone down. And more sinking sounds. I don't know where they're coming from. Uh, but we uh, destroy some damage, some planes on the ground, gotta keep that. I'd like to shutter this runway. I really would. Um, I'm not doing enough runway hits to do that. But uh, Rangoon, it's another one of those bases that can really be a thorn in your side if you let it get too built up for the allies. Um, what I don't want to have happen is for him to base T-38s there and start sweeping uh, uh, Bangkok because uh, I don't have a lot of defense against that. Destroying some more planes on the ground at Quang Chowan. Uh, not a lot of cap here um, over my task force. You would think I'd have more with uh, Patani, Singora, and Kota Baru all having cap there, but luckily my Zeros do handle those uh, swordfish. Uh, Dutch bombers go after my ships that are kind of uh, scouring Bali Pakwing Samarinda for, for hiding task forces. Will to be sorty from Hong Kong, but luckily uh, don't make contact with my destroyer. 
And here we have another uh, four engine raid on Vigan. I have a few, uh, actually more zeros coming. Uh, they don't make good contact, unfortunately, with four engine bombers. I'm going to take a lot of damage on the ground. Yeah, look at all those destroyed planes on the ground. That's not that's not great to see. Uh, in one fell swoop, it looks like I lose what seven planes with only uh, a couple of his damaged. What else did they come in at? 15,000. Um, I'll have to up my cap uh, around this. It looks like they flew either from Bataan or from Clark Field. So I also have to make sure that uh, I pay a little more attention to those runways and try to hit some of them on the ground. Just like other planes, it's much easier to uh, destroy them on the ground than it is in the air, but that goes doubly for four-engine bombers. They're just a nightmare to deal with as the Japanese. Uh, they're just so darn tough, and the Japanese don't have, especially early game, the uh, firepower in their planes to deal with them. Gun values aren't high enough. Anyway, um, more hits on uh, these high-value transport ships at Cebu. None sunk yet. Sally's are going after the shipping at Hong Kong still. Oh yeah, and now we're getting some good sinkings. One, two, looks like three, four uh, ships sunk there. Betty's are doing the same thing. I lose a Betty to Flak, but we lose, we uh, sink the French destroyer, destroyer Le Hardy, which is a great French destroyer. I'm glad to have it. Uh, sunk. Not have to worry about it later on. Losing a lot of planes of flak today. That's because I'm, I'm sending them in relatively low. I wanted to get those good hits on the ships and the runways. Uh, sinking more at Hong Kong there. After the uh, turn, I'll go through the uh, ship losses and we can see what we uh, what we nabbed. I have one D Oscars uh, sweeping Singapore. He's putting up a pretty good cap though, so I may take some uh, significant losses here. Let's see what they do. No, nope, no Japanese losses, but it's pretty inconclusive. I just take out a buffalo. Port attack there, that doesn't do much. Yeah, those valves are way too low. I guess they were dive bombing? They are dive bombers, that makes sense, but uh, uh, they don't need to be dive bombing an airfield or a port, so I need to change those missions on those valves. Uh, that's way too high uh, damage for that mission. Absolutely not, and again, not enough return for uh, what they're doing. I think this may be the first day in the air that uh, uh, an air loss is that I come out uh, worse than uh, my opponent does. I just have been taking too many losses and haven't been inflicting enough. Uh, this is a good little uh, raid though on Cebu, taking out a buffalo and three warhawks. Just keeping the Georgetown runway shuttered. Ooh, swordfish get through. Oh, that's made my heart stop right there. Um, but uh, CVE Heisen manages to dodge the torpedo. Thank goodness. Um, and shame on you, Zeros, for letting those biplanes uh, get through your cap. And hey, Patani and Cote of Aru, uh, where's your cap as well? We're going to have to check on that because they do have uh, planes assigned to that mission. Um, could be that we just didn't detect the uh, swordfish in time. Also, the swordfish came in very low, uh, and it's possible that uh, um, my cap was a little bit too high. More of these Chinese bombers. I have Nates above uh, Sen Yang. Um, they don't do any damage, and a couple are destroyed by flak. 
touch bombers try to hit my cruiser. Lenheims now uh, go after my uh, CBE. One of them is destroyed. Uh, it's four engine bombers flying from, looks like uh, this base right here. Um, disabled one of my squads that's trying to take Port of Princia. You can see me landing at Jolo there as well. Another uh, squad disabled there. Uh, I'm going to have to pace that airfield pretty soon. Unfortunately, I can't reach them from Takao, so I'm going to have to launch carrier strikes uh, or something else to try to take some of these uh, four engine bombers out on the ground. Little strike at Wake. And again, we go after Red Goon. We lose a Betty, but we destroy two HA-81A3s and a Buffalo. What kind of strike was this? It's air attack. So, uh, yeah, I think it was just going after the runway. I return the favor at uh, Porto Princia, uh, doing my own bombing of the hex. Neither one of us are very effective. In this case, I take out a non-combat squad. Uh, Betty's find uh, some Dutch ships here um, in the Java Sea, but aren't able to connect with any bombs. And Kate's find these uh, destroyers uh, that fled all the way from up at uh, um, fled all the way south from Hong Kong, uh, but uh, they find uh, Boreal and put a uh, torpedo in them. I think this is the destroyer task force that was right around here last turn. I thought that I was going to run at full speed at Miri and get among my invasion force. That's what I would have done. I was really worried about that. Looks like instead they doglegged into the uh, Makassar Strait. Look at all these uh, submarines here, though, uh, from him, by the way. And uh, my uh, carrier, which is uh, covering the Jolo landing, managed to... Uh, uh, put some uh, Kates in the air and uh, sink one of them. I actually don't have sink, but uh, it's going to be damaged. Again, going after uh, Cebu. I'll have my carriers switch to this hex right here and try to uh, nab some of those four engine bombers instead. Still doing a great job at Cebu in destroying lots of planes on the ground. But the uh, actual runway hits are very low. And here we finally have the uh, bombardment at Guam. The Yamashiro, helped out by uh, some escorts. They do very little damage. Look at that. <laughs> it's pretty pathetic, uh, naval bombardment. And now we get a ship, a submarine sinking um, sound effect there. We'll have to see where that came from. Some ground attack. I have a shock attack going in at Hong Kong. I have 2,000 AV here. He has 300. I'm hoping we can lower forts two or three times. Hello, you fighting yeah, orphans of the Took Pacific. it in one turn. This That's is your uh, favorite on the first enemy, attack. Orphan Anne at Radio Tokyo, with music to lift your spirits and words to depress your morale. But first, Imperial General Headquarters announced today that the ever-victorious forces of the Japanese Empire have captured Hong Kong. And for once, uh, Orphan Anne is accurate. So we have taken Hong Kong. We did it on our first real attack. And obviously he wasn't expecting this, because otherwise he would have moved these air units out of the hex, and he didn't. So uh, we get to destroy those planes and he'll have to buy out the squadrons if he wants them back. Buying out squadrons is pretty cheap though, so I imagine he'll do it. So I'll have to uh, face them again in a few months. Uh, but yeah, great that we destroyed that uh, pretty completely. Took high casualties ourselves, but for me it's a good trade when I um, take the hex that early. It's just I like the, uh, the pace uh, of it. I like the uh, um, the, the timing 
it just allows these troops to be freed up even faster to start pushing north into China. I have a deliberate attack at uh, Xinyang. I'm just trying to clear this hex, and I do. 3 to 1 odds. And yeah, a pretty uh, convincing victory there. Uh, destroying a lot of his squads, and they retreat uh, north. Also, deliberate attack here. 10 to 1 odds. And two of his uh, troops retreated. That freed up the uh, the railroad there. Uh, he was blocking the uh, that railway um, from the coast north. So now he's moved off that hex. I'll have to pursue him and kind of just hunt down uh, those troops because otherwise they're going to be able to continue to uh, move back and block my uh, rail link. Bombardment at Guam. So it's 92. I have 459 uh, on Guam. I feel like I need more bombardment though before I actually attack the base. We'll let my troops settle in, uh, so to speak, first. Uh, allies bombard at uh, Ai Chang. He has quite a few, as 1,700, uh, and I have about 700 uh, troops. However, he takes all the damage in the bombardment. Three squads disabled and doors destroyed and 15 disabled. Deliberate attack down here, um, and he cleans up. This is the uh, force that shock attack last turn got mauled badly in the process, and uh, he's able to push me out of, uh, of the hex. That's okay, I've got some heavier units coming up from the south that'll be able to deal with it. Um, it's just poor attack on my part uh, at first to do that shock attack when I didn't know exactly uh, how many troops he had there. I have a deliberate attack up here. In this case, 1 to 12 odds. That doesn't go my way. Still, despite the really poor... Oh, actually, he's attacking there. Yeah, allied deliberate attack. I'm sorry. 1 to 12. Um, I take a little bit. He takes quite a few. 146 disabled compared to 3 disabled. Oh, I'll take it. And that's it for the turn. So, kind of a so-so day in China, but the fact that we took Hong Kong is fantastic. The fact that we put a torpedo into the Lexington is also fantastic. Uh, I don't know how much, or not the Lexington, the Constitution is fantastic. I don't know how much damage she has, but it's nice to see anyway. Let's take a, take a look at our uh, aircraft losses real quick. Zero, still taking the brunt of the losses. Um, however, allies do take more losses than we do overall, 105 compared to 86 mostly comprised of buffaloes, loses quite a bit of hurricanes, I lose some betties, buffaloes. Mabel's really took it on the chin with that flak over uh, Hong Kong, which because we took Hong Kong this turn I guess it was kind of uh, uh, unnecessary for them to make that sacrifice. Uh, but still, it was, it was satisfying to put those bombs into the ship at uh, at port. Yeah, so okay day in the air. I would like to see a little bit of a better ratio, closer to the 2 to 1 that we were getting uh, earlier. But still, it could be worse. Let's take a look at ship sunk. And looks at, let's take a look first at what I lost today. Nothing. Hey, that's great to see. We've had a couple disastrous days at sea, so uh, it's good to see a day where we don't lose anything. Let's take a look at Allied ships. La Hardy, bunch of ships at Hong Kong. Let's actually sort here. A Boreal. So we think that the torpedo that Kate put her in her uh, put her down. We think that the torpedo that went to the Mugford off the coast of the western United States um, was fatal. And they're claiming the Dutch uh, K-12 
because of those depth charges that we put in there. Oh, I, I don't believe it though. I'll have to take a look at that damage report. Couple uh, mine layers destroyed at Hong Kong while building. That's because they show up as reinforcements later if you let Hong Kong uh, stay on too long. And then all these ships lost at Hong Kong right there. Definitely the uh, biggest uh, loss was the Le Hardy. Like I said, very uh, capable French destroyer. And let's see if uh, they admitted to anything else either. So we're going to go to our ops report. So yeah, so they admitted to Chak Sang on December 9th. Indris and the Mundra on December 9th. And the Agnes on December 9th. And some HDMLs. So... Um, that's where some of the other points came from, and that makes me feel better. Uh, that other turn, I felt like we were sinking ships, and uh, they weren't showing up on the uh, report. Uh, but it just turned out to be uh, we didn't have the uh, the right intel yet. Okay, so what's going on in the game? I'll talk really briefly about that. We've landed at Guam. We have another bombardment force headed to Guam to try to soften up the uh, garrison there um, before I uh, attack. Um, who knows, maybe uh, some more intense bombing will start happening there as well. Um, I have a, a good division here, the 44th Infantry, and I don't want to get it too eat up taking Guam, which can happen. Guam can be a tough nut to crack in this particular mod of the game. Here are those uh, destroyers. They're going to have to run the Makaksar Straight Gauntlet. Or I have... Actually, this is going to happen right now. Uh. In any case, I want to try to intercept the, the rest of these destroyers and uh, have the cruiser squadron right there to do it. I have carrier task force right here, which is going to support and cover uh, the landings here. Um, I should have a surface task force or two and some better screen uh, in front of all this, but um, it's kind of a shoestring operation right now in the uh, the Dead Chiefs Indies. We just landed at Jolo. We'll try to take that this turn. We'll have to look to see how many reinforcements made it to Puerto Princia um, being transported in by plane. Uh, if it's a decent amount, we'll go ahead and try to make an attack there as well to take Puerto Princia. We've landed at Legaspi, so we're going to be moving up the uh, Luzon Peninsula uh, toward Manila. And of course, we have troops moving down uh, south in Luzon. In Malaya, things are just kind of slow here. I wish I could uh, um, accelerate them a little bit, but I just have to wait for these units to slog through the jungle to get on these roads. Once they're on this main road down here, things go a little bit faster. But getting them from this side of the um, of Malaya over to the west side of Malaya, I always find it takes more time. Uh, that I like. That's why the Mirror Sing Gambit is so popular. I don't do Mirror Sing Gambit um, in Focus Pacific for two reasons. One, there's a fort there at Mirror Sing, which makes uh, the Mirror Sing Gambit a little tougher. And second, um, there's so much air power in Focus Pacific starting at Singapore that it's super, super risky. You have to deal with, I think, two Wildebeest squadrons and two Swordfish squadrons in the immediate vicinity. And so unless you have really, really great air coverage, it's a great way to get your uh, invasion force just sunk by those uh, uh, British biplane torpedo bombers. Uh, lots of things going on. I have lots of little escorting forces running around, ASWTFs. I have uh, uh, troops moving around the map trying to get more into the Philippines, trying to get more into Malaya. Um, up here in Burma, we started to move um, 
west. Now he's trying to cut my rail line here with this little unit. Um, I'm trying to bomb it, but those bomb bombing runs did not fly uh, today. It's going to be a race to see if my unit gets to him first or he uh, crosses into uh, and cuts that rail line. I'm hoping to bomb him um, and mode knock this unit from move to combat, which will slow him down considerably. Moving on Tavoy here with the uh, armor division. Once that happens, they'll be able to cruise right up this road and hopefully take Mulmain and start to threaten Pegu. Meanwhile, I have divisions, uh, Royal uh, Thai Army divisions, that are going to cross the river north of Pegu and cut that rail line so he'll have to uh, try to escape uh, up this way. Meanwhile, I have uh, troops starting to build a air base here at uh, Paseno Loke, and once that is online, I'll be able to bomb him in all this clear terrain right here as long as I keep air superiority. That's why it's so important for me to keep sweeping and bombing at Rangoon, despite the, uh, the bomber losses. The fact that Hong Kong is taken will free up all the, uh, the air really at uh, Sema and uh, Canton. We're going to still keep Quang Chowan suppressed. But for a while, we're going to uh, uh, let these uh, uh, squadrons rest. They've been working really hard while we move um, all these troops over to Quang Chowan. We'll spend about 2,000 AV to Quang Chowan to take it. The rest will head up to uh, Wu Chao and then to uh, Lui Chao. Meanwhile, I have a few uh, divisions here. Uh, they're going to cross the river and assault Nanning. That's going to be a deadly assault, but uh, I don't want to quit the game. But uh, Nanning usually don't, doesn't have too many defenders, so I think he'll be all right. Let's take a look at his carriers. So, yeah, I did manage to vector a few of these subs right in his path, uh, which is great to see. That allowed me to get that hit on the Lexington. We'll continue to do that. We'll move these in that line uh, to Pearl Harbor. And hopefully Lexington is slowed and some more of my uh, submarines might be able to catch up and uh, um, hound her on uh, her way back. I keep, keep calling her the Lexington, but it was the Constitution, wasn't it, that we uh, put the uh, torpedo into. Down here, we're going to take Nehru Island and Ocean Island very shortly. This is a... Uh, um, AMC that I'm going to try to sneak down um, behind his lines to get among his shipping. No detection on it yet, so that's great to see. Um, and then I have four amphibious task forces that are going to uh, start taking uh, Northeast New Guinea, and uh, the Hosho is uh, moving to support them, provide them some air cover. I'm not super worried about serious uh, uh, a serious threat to them. However, the Catalinas that fly from Horn Island and Port Moresby can reach up here. And if he puts them on naval attack, I do have to worry about them bombing those fragile task forces. So I'm just going to provide some zeros uh, with the carrier to uh, uh, shoot down any Catalinas that come calling. What's next? Well, what's next is I have to deal with the damage that was done by um, his carrier raid, uh, reassemble Awake Invasion Force, and then I can take the KB and properly support that Wake uh, Invasion. Because we are taking Wake. Wake needs to be taken. It's a great sub base. It'll allow me to. Uh, well, Kwajalein Island is, is as well, but uh, um, once I take Wake, Midway's not too far away. Um, I don't like having Wake right in my backyard, either. I think that's about it, um, as far as what's going on right now. Um, we have to still make these kind of opening moves before we can start uh, delving deeper into uh, his his back lines. And, uh... Oh, I have one more thing going on. I've got uh, a 
couple task forces heading up to the Aleutians. They're just going to take a couple of the Aleutian Islands. I'm not going to get too close to Cold Bay where he has an airbase or Kodiak where he has an airbase, but uh, not only does it set the stage for a potential uh, new uh, front of the war, but it gives them one more thing to, to worry about and divert resources to. And it doesn't take a lot from me. I can just send some little TFs up there, take a couple islands, then if I decide I want to pivot there, I already have the bases. Um, and if not, um, no worries. And it's close enough to my home islands that it's easy for me to uh, reinforce if I need to. China's a quagmire. I hate playing China. <laughs> I hate uh, the China game. Uh, it's just uh, the land combat is probably my least favorite part of, uh, of the game. And so you'll see me making some poor decisions here in China. It's not intentional. It's just that uh, I'm not very good at it. <laughs> Any case, hope you enjoyed the turn. Thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you in the Discord. Take care, everybody. Have a great night.